AP Stats. Hope you guys are having a great day. Um, we are going to be starting chapter 12, which is all about inference for um, linear regression models. So um, we're basically going to be doing hypothesis tests for scatter plots. Well, the line of best fit of scatter plots. So, anyways, <clears throat> our SWIBAT for today is we're going to be looking at computer output. Um, and making confidence intervals for the slope, the true slope, of a least squares regression line for um, a set of data or for um, a relationship between two variables. So, I guess what we're going to do, more hypothesis tests, and we're going to be checking conditions and, you know, all that fun stuff. Same stuff we've always done, I mean, for the last, like, at least four chapters. Um, so, yeah, that'll be fun. And, uh, really are the big question that we want to make sure we answer is when you get a scatter plot of two sets of data um, and you find the least squares regression line and you find oh there might be a correlation between these two variables um, might be a linear relationship between these two variables um, the question is what are the two possibilities that you find um, the two reasons why you might find a relationship between those two variables. One is there actually is a relationship between those two variables and the second one is that you just happened to randomly find in that particular case, in that particular sample, it just so happened by chance that there was um, a linear relationship within the sample. Um, so either there truly is or there is not a relationship between the two variables correlation, linear correlation is what we're dealing with right now. Alright, talking just notation strictly at this moment in time, um, I'm going to give you the population parameters that we're going to be using and then the, the sample statistics that we will use in this chapter. Um, so when you are looking at a least squares regression line, the true population will have a least squares regression line. It will either be no relationship at all you know, a positive or a negative, although I don't know which direction you'll see. Anyways, one of the, you know, it's going it, to, there will be a least squares regression line, a true one for the true population. Um, and we call that mu sub y equals alpha plus beta times x. All right, x is your explanatory variable, right, your independent variable. y is your dependent variable or your response variable. Um, but mu sub y is the mean of the response variables, which makes sense because the line, the least squares regression line, is really the average value that you'd expect to see for any given x value. So I'm going to write those in. Alpha is your true um, y-intercept and beta is your true slope. Now keep in mind that the formula in the calculator might be slightly different. Maybe it's um, b plus ax or perhaps um, you know on the I believe on the um, packet it's like b1 plus b, b0x or something like that but just you know the slope is the one that is attached to the x and the y-intercept is the one that's just a variable just a constant. Alright so here are the majority of our population parameters we have mu sub y is the mean response alpha is the true y-intercept beta is the true slope x is the explanatory variable, and then sigma is the standard deviation of the residuals. Um, and then you're going to be estimating all of those things with, um, with essentially with your sample, right, the values that you get in your sample. Um, the mean response is um, really your y hat, right, is what we're estimating with um, is the y hat. Um, we estimate alpha with the um, y-intercept of our sample, which is A, and then the slope B, we um, are estimating for beta. Um, and then the standard deviation, so this is something that um, you're going to want to have, um, is the standard deviation of the residuals. Okay, um, We don't usually know the standard deviation of the residuals for the true population. Um, you don't usually have the true population or any information about the true population. Um, but we do have a formula for the standard deviation of the residuals um, as an estimate. So S is just the uh, standard deviation of the residuals. So you add up 
all the residuals, square them, divide by n minus 2 in this case, um, and then take the square root of it. Um, usually that will be given to you. Um, you rarely are actually going to have to calculate it, but, you know, in case you do, plug it into your calculator, make a, you know, list 1, list 2, and then in list 3, do the residuals, and then use one bar stats to find the residual um, standard deviation. Okay. So, all right, so looking at computer output, this was for a study that was looking at non-exercise activity, NEA, and that's like fidgeting and like wiggling in your seat and like doing things that aren't exercise and seeing if that keeps you thin. So um, we have the constant, which is always going to be the constant coefficient here. Um, that is going to be your y-intercept, which in our case is the a value. Um, the coefficient of NEA change, that's going to be your slope, okay? Um, S is your standard deviation of your residuals. Obviously, R sk and, well, R sk is R squared. Um, R squared adjusted, we don't really have to deal with. Um, they also, this is for hypothesis tests, so not for today, but they also happen to give you your t value, your test statistic, and your p value for the given test. Um, we're not using that today, but just so you have that. Um, but lastly, and more importantly for today, is your um, standard error coefficient. Remember, standard error is standard deviation, um, but if you don't know the true standard deviation, it's what we use as an estimate for the standard deviation. Um, and so in this case, when you're doing a test with um, beta, right, you're doing a test on, you know, the true value of the slope, which is what we're going to be doing, um, you're going to need that standard error. So let's actually construct a confidence interval for the true slope. So you're going to have to check um, your conditions for linear regression analysis um, for the inference. However, uh, we're going to do that in the example, but because um, we talked about that in class earlier. So um, constructing the confidence interval for the true slope b, um, it's always your statistic plus or minus your critical value times the standard deviation of the statistic. And in our case, our statistic is b, right, the slope that you have in your sample. And then your critical value, just like means, um, you're going to be using t because, again, similar to means, um, your, the standard deviation of a sample is very different from the standard deviation of the population, so you need to have a little wiggle room. Um, so it's not exactly a normal, it's not really, really close to a normal curve, so you have to use the t distribution instead. So you have t star is your critical value, and then the standard deviation of the statistic is that standard error of the slope, which I showed you guys um, above right? Standard error for the slope. Your degrees of freedom in this case, um, instead of similar to means, it's a little different than the means, instead of n minus 1, it's n minus 2 is your degrees of freedom. So if your sample size is 30, your degrees of freedom is 28. Um, and you may be wondering why is your degrees of freedom n minus 2? And basically that comes into play um, because your degrees of freedom is really n minus the number of parameters you're estimating. Um, so when you're doing um, a test for the means, you're only estimating um, mu. In this case, you're estimating uh, beta and alpha, which there are two parameters you're estimating, so it's n minus 2. Um, if you have a quadratic and you're estimating, um, right, you're, uh, the basic quadratic form is ax squared plus bx plus c, um, you would be estimating a, b, and c, in which case um, then you would need n minus 3 degrees of freedom. All right, let's try an example. So say we did a class experiment testing accuracy of rubber band throws and distance from the target. Um, below would be is a computer output of the data, and it just so happened that in this case, um, as the distance from the target increased, the score actually also increased. Um, so I don't know what they were feeding those kids, but you know. <laughs> Anyways, um, below is a computer output. So it says find a 95% confidence interval for the true slope of the least squares regression line 
relating target points and distance from the target. Um, and so step one is, you know, state what you're going to do. Step two, plan it, namely check your conditions. Remember when you're doing um, inference about um, the least squares regression line, you have to check the liner conditions. So we'll go over those. Okay, state. We want to construct a 95% confidence interval for the true slope of the least squares regression line relating distance from target and score. Number two, check the conditions, okay, um, which is the liner, but, or the linear, where A is just and. <laughs> um, and those are the following. Linear, okay, does the function, does the graph, look approximately linear. And so you go back to your scatter plot and residual. You have to mention both to get full credit. Um, your, uh, you talk about, oh, there seems to be a linear relationship between um, these two variables, and since there's no p major, you don't see any patterns in the residual, then you think a line is the best fit for this data. So you'd say something like this. Scatter plot shows um, a pretty clear linear form. Um, and the residual plot shows no patterns or a seemingly random scatter about the horizontal line. Next uh, is independent. Where the trial is independent, or if it's sampling without replacement, is n less than or equal to 10% of the population. In this case, we're really seeing rubber bands. Oh, the sun's shiny. Um, really seeing rubber bands. Uh, the trials should be independent from each other. In this case, the trials were independent. Okay, normal. <clears throat> Um, for the normal, you want to check if the residuals are approximately normal, normally distributed. So you want to go back to either the histogram of the residual, right, so this one here, or you go to the normal probability plot of the residuals and look for a linear pattern. And so you can um, mention one or both of these um, in order to check that condition. Next is equal variance, E. Um, and for this one, you want to go up to the residual plot, and you want to look at, okay, for, you know, along the line of best fit, right, is my scattering reasonably varied um, <laughs> equally, right? So, like, this observation doesn't vary that much more than another observation, right? So, you know, all of your y values are generally scattered within the same amount of variation. And lastly, R, random, was there random assignment um, of treatments or was there random selection? Um, and in this case, it, yes, there was. Um, I don't know if the problem said it, but you will assume that there was, and it'll usually tell you. Cool, that's all of our conditions. So next, we need to actually create the confidence interval. All right, confidence interval, same thing we've always done, statistic, plus or minus the the critical value times standard deviation of the statistic. B is your statistic for your slope, which um, is given to you up here. So that's the 0 0.0057244. That's B. T star critical value you just get from the 95% confidence interval um, piece of the um, of the stats packet for the T distribution, but degrees of freedom n minus two. Um, but first, let's do our standard error. Standard error comes from um, standard error coefficient for the slope. So your standard error is 0 0.0002. Okay, degrees of freedom is n minus 2. We don't know what n is until we go to our little thingy over here. Oh, did they give us that? <laughs> Whoops, I forgot to. Sorry. So in the actual experiment, there were 70 observations. So our degrees of freedom is 68. Sorry, I didn't write that. All right, so when you go to the table, you'll find that there isn't a degrees of freedom 68. You have to be a little more conservative, so you would round down to 60. You can't say your sample size is larger than it actually is. So um, we get T star to be 1.995, um, and then we'll plug that in and find our confidence interval. This is our confidence interval, and then we want to conclude in context. Remember, you are estimating beta, which is the true slope of the least squares regression line. So you conclude something like this, we're 95% confident the true slope of the regression line relating the score and distance from target lies between blank and blank. Now if you have the actual data, the raw data, and you put it in list 1 and list 2, you can do the confidence interval in your calculator. Go to stat, 
tests, and then there's a Lin Reg T interval, and you can.